Hey folks, Jay from All Cops Are Bastards here. Um, yeah, I'm going to play some Caves of Cad on the again after a few weeks. Me not doing that. Um, I'm kind of I'm sorry about that. I uh, to be honest, I had some things going on with. You know, mental health and stuff, and uh, you know, combined with the whole lockdown situation and a lot of stuff, I don't know, a few things just got to me in a way that I was not expecting, and that needed sorting out, and uh, yeah, and you know, in more recent times, in more recent days, recent weeks, I don't know, it just didn't feel appropriate to be playing video games the internet. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Just, you know? Yeah. Just so you know where I stand, um, full sol- yeah, like, full solidarity the protests against police violence. I've been on the streets as well. There was a kind of like, a, which was kind of heartening to see, there was kind of a huge turnout here in Germany for protests against police violence. And uh, a thing that has happened, which, you know, like way more than usually. And, uh, you know, there's kind of a thing that you could see happening in the wake of that, which was a lot of people from my country were starting to kind of deflect this as uh, being kind of a US thing. And let me just tell you that those folks are kind of full of crap. You know, like all the problems that are present in the US, we have all that shit here as well. If there is a difference, it's a difference of degree, not of category. So, um, you know, racist policing, People of color mysteriously dying in police custody. That is shit that is happening here as well. And if any anybody from Europe or wherever is trying to trying to tell you that this isn't the case, they are either not willing to face the reality or they are deciding to not do that. And make of that what you will. Yeah, definitely. There, I, I've seen some of that happening uh, with Australia as well. Who was saying like, oh, well, at least it's not that way here. And I don't. I, I'm not. I cannot speak to Australia all that much because I don't know much about Australia, if I'm quite honest. But uh, you know, like if you look at history, it's pretty clear that trying to wash your hands of any of that is absolute obvious and uh, it's the same thing here so just to make sure just to make clear where i stand on all of this all cops are bastards fuck this shit okay that said how about we start playing some cases right right also hi sid nice to see you <laughs> yeah, it's always kind of weird to... That was kind of the thing, right? Um, it's always kind of weird to make that transition. <laughs> to say, okay, let's play a video game, hey, fun times. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I didn't do that recently was kind of that, because it just didn't feel appropriate in a lot of ways. Um, and I didn't feel like my voice was needed on the internet, you know? <laughs> and sometimes that's kind of a healthy thing to realize about yourself. Okay. Um, but whatever. Let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's play some of this game. 
Again, since I haven't played in a while, every save game that I have, I have had is incompatible. I've purged my save games, so we have nothing here. And uh, let's, let's start a new game. What character did I play last? And we went Um Let's start a new character. Loads of lots of new patches, indeed. Um, the they did a revamp of the uh, of the status bar and stuff like that. So those things look different now, and I'm kind of excited about that because it looks kind of nice. Let's, should we do Trukin? Nah, let's do mutated. What to, uh, let's let's do Trukin. Doesn't feel doesn't feel right with the spirit of the time, but uh, let's do Trukin. Whatever. I don't know what exactly I'm gonna play, but we're gonna see. A little hard to get used to, but you love it. Yeah. Um, again, as you can see, I'm not doing the full overlay UI. Might actually try that again, but a lot of that is not finished yet. But I do think the... Let's see. I'm gonna do strength, toughness. Kind of weird. What am I doing? I don't need 18 ego. Um, like this? Let's do it like that. Sure. Should we do very standard Child of the Hearth? Let's do Child of the Hearth. Whatever. And uh, we're gonna do Night Vision. Night Vision. We're gonna start in Jopa. Basic stuff. I need to get back into the game. I haven't played in a long time. And um, another thing that was kind of happening was <laughs> I kind of... Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is different. Um, so, let's take a look at the, at the new status bar and stuff, right? So, one thing that I like about this is that they have kind of categorized it in a more sensible way. So we have all of the sort of things pertaining to the stats of the character up here. So we have all the stats, we have our armor and dodge values and that stuff. <laughs> we have, uh, you know, everything that is about, you know, this is our location, this is uh, all of that stuff. HP is now up here, uh, level and experience as well. And I kind of like that because it it feels more of a kin with all of these other things Whereas we have all the ability stuff down there and uh, Yeah, there's a water wheel in Joppa as well indeed I've seen that I've just taken I've just started a random new thing and just uh, took a look at this But I didn't really do more than that and there's a water wheel here, which is kind of funny to me you know, in a lot of ways, this is a little funny to me because, like, this here is obviously not a flowing stream, so I don't know how a water wheel would actually work here. Like, how how would you how would you get the you know how would you get the wheel to spin in a little pond like this? <laughs> But you know, like uh, Case of Cut does not really. I think, th yeah, the simulation does not account for. That's not in the game. You you don't actually have flowing liquids. Like f liquids are always. I mean, you can transport liquids like this, for example, right? So, but um, the simulation does not account for liquids independently moving. I guess, right? They need to be acted on by entities. Which is absolutely fine, you know? That's not... That's okay for the game to do. Not do that, honestly. Um, <laughs> it doesn't need to make sense, but that's just... I don't know. It's just a funny thing. It's not a knock against the game. I, I still like it. So, that's a bizarre contraption. Puzzling artifact. We can examine it. Um, wooden water wheel. Oh yeah, right. We need to be careful because we might damage it. And that might be... Yeah, sure. Wooden machinery. So these are kind of new entities here. Uh, producing mechanical power, and that powers this thing here. I think this is a wall with a gearbox. Um, I feel like this is something, you know, something that is a bit um, millstone, yeah, and that powers the millstone. 
Uh, I think these are early stages of things that could become a lot more interesting down the line. Probably, right? Oh yeah, this is a container. What if I put one... Molded mushroom. It probably does not account for that yet, but uh, that could be a thing in the cards for the future. And this really seems like sort of early stages of that. Also, like um, in the Tomb of the Eaters, there's this whole powering, there's this whole power con contraption where all of the power is generated for everything around it, like all the pistons and all this kind of stuff. And it also does not simulate that, right? Like you can cut the power, but it does not actually change anything in uh, in the other maps so it, did, it does not fully simulate that yet but i believe if um i believe them putting that stuff in might actually be kind of an indicator that they plan to do something like that which is kind of cool right like you can sort of there's like a lot of power generators and in a big old crazy room and you can sort of cut the connections but it doesn't actually do anything, right? Like all the pistons and stuff still work, even if they are, can't be powered anymore. I've tried that stuff. So again, this seems to be sort of like early stages of a system that might be fleshed out a bunch more later on. And also, yeah, I only got to the Tomb of the Eaters once. I kind of like the message wind. Also, I kind of like how that it's just resizable, you know? It seems to be a bit much. Like like it to be kind of a small window here. I think that's fine. But yeah, I, I do really enjoy the new the new UI things. Again, as you can see, I'm not using this. Um, you can obviously, let me see, I don't know if that works on the fly, but if I do this, yeah, we have sort of the overlay UI, which gives us an inventory that looks like this. Um, which, you know, it's kind of cool, but I find it hard to get used to. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of like my, like my, uh, and it's not really, you know, I guess they're working on it, but uh, for now, over there you are, where are we? Uh, turn that off a little. The text larger, I don't know, might be. Um, Overlay control scale. Maybe that. What if I make this larger? No. I mean, it could be possible because the overlay UI is not. No minimap. Oh, yeah, minimap. We don't need a minimap. But, uh. Like list. No. I don't know. I don't know if that is a thing yet, but uh, it could be nice. Again, all of this stuff is very much in development, right? So. The overlay UI is also very much a preliminary. We're working on this thing. Oh, there's a floating glow sphere. Um, our right, short sword. We don't really have a use for that. We don't need the floating glow sphere because we do have night vision, so that's kind of nice. It'd be tough to get this early. Oh yeah, 500. We need to lug a lot of stuff back to actually be able to get that. Um, okay, let me see. I might actually... Okay, I'm gonna inject a... Sure pretty as the Cogmind UI. Yeah, right, Cogmind. I've also not played this game yet. But probably do that. There's a small trinket here. Just blue. That's a sphere of negative weight. Interesting. For 85? That's cheap. Okay, we're gonna get that. I'm going to buy the sphere of negative weight. Because why the fuck not? As pretty as... yeah. Cogmind, 
a game that I had vaguely on my radar for, for a while. I recently bought a game, which is sort of a shameless nostalgia thing. Um, I bought the Command and Conquer Remaster. <laughs> because... I don't know. It's a good remaster. It's a really good remaster, actually. Like, they really knocked that out of the park. And I love the Command and Conquer games. It's kind of weird to go back to them, because they are really old, sort of as strategy games. But... I don't know. And I kind of fell out of real-time strategy in a big way. Sort of... I don't know, like, when... Um, I think the internet and competitive real-time strategy play kind of peeled the layers back on how you actually have to play these games, you know, to actually be good at them. Um, and I will never be able to do that, right? I will never actually be able to put in the time and dedication to such a game to actually pull that off in any way. Uh, <laughs> and But I also cannot really unsee that, right? Like. Having watched competitive StarCraft has kind of ruined the game for me, honestly, to just play it, right? Like, back in the day, I played StarCraft like a chump. I just, um, I don't know, I just played it. We all played it that way, and that was fun. And it's kind of tough to go back to that once you know how you're actually supposed to play the games. So, I don't know, it's a weird thing with me and real-time strategy games. But, you know, Command & Conquer is so old and so sort of not made to be a competitive game that it works. And I'm just having fun with it. Um, I was thinking about maybe streaming some of the campaign stuff. I don't know. We're gonna see. I need to get back to streaming. Anyways. So might do that. Mech Commander. The Mech Commander games. Uh, I played the first Mech Commander. Like a demo of that. That was kind of cool. Yeah. I was... Um, I really like the Mech Warrior games. You know, like Mech Warrior 2 is great. <laughs> and uh, Mech Commander is kind of that, but sort of as a real time tactics thing. Which is awesome. Let me see, what are we actually doing here? Okay, we have a steel mace, steel gauntlets, leather boots, leather apron, that is fine. Yeah, we have. We don't actually need to lug around this these energy relays, but we can just. We're gonna make a. Uh, we're gonna make a stash and jobber once we get back. Iron mace. We're going to put the iron mace into the left hand right now. Again, I'm probably not going to go for. I'm probably not going to go. For. You wield. And streaming Battletech. Yeah. Battletech seems like a cool game. Like the new Battletech Airbrain Schemes game. Uh, yeah. It's one of the things that I would love to play at some point. But I don't see myself having sort of the, the time to really get into that. But, yeah. It's also kind of a genre of games. I like. I like tactics games. Okay, what am I doing? Um, yeah, right. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go down. Also, yeah, right. Um, I'm going to do the thing where I pick up everything from the snap jaws for now. Yeah, Battletech. I was kind of, um... It's counter-weighted weighted Iron Mace is better, so we're gonna put that in for now. Um, I was... So one of the... I don't follow that much video games, sort of YouTube, media, and Twitch, and all this kind of stuff. I don't know. I'm not all that immersed in that. But one of the video game things that I do follow is, uh... Is... 
sort of uh, the Three Moves Ahead podcast in Waypoint. Um, and uh, they've talked a lot when that was kind of current. They've talked a lot about Battletech. And, you know, what that game does well. And that really made me want to play it. But again, I didn't really. But then again, I don't know. I put like 90 hours in Animal Crossing, which is crazy, so whatever. Maybe I'm just full of shit when I say that I don't have the time to do whatever. <laughs> you know, it was more like a comfort thing for me. Um, okay. Let's take a look at this. Reshev, okay. On the E, and the leather apron has no heat resistance. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Sort of. Now it's kind of a kind of a cosplaying as a a black blacksmith. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. I don't know. Like my partner and I had like um like together we had kind of like two hundred hours in the uh the 3DS Animal Crossing, which was also crazy. I don't know, there's something about this that... Uh, it's just kind of comforting. It's kind of a thing where um, I actually used to kind of play games that way. Sort of when I think back to, for example, how I, as a kid, how I played, I played a lot of the LucasArts adventures, for example, right? Like Monkey Island, um, and Sam and Max, and Day of the Tentacle, and this kind of stuff. And when, like back in the day when I played these games, it wasn't really just about sort of playing through the games, right? That wasn't really my goal. My goal wasn't actually really to, you know, I did solve the puzzles and stuff, but a lot of a lot of my thing about that was to just kind of exist in the game world it was kind of like my main draw for the why are you not going down no it worked i uh <laughs> pressed the wrong thing i did the classic roguelike thing about sort of the where i try to do the brackets for going down i don't played this game more than any other roguelike. I did play some I did play some NetHack recently, so maybe that was it. That kinda tripped me up. You use the plus and minus keys in this game to change elevation. So yeah, level two. I need to kinda get used to Okay, and NetHack is hard. The thing about NetHack is, um, and sort of that school of roguelike, I really like it. But the thing about that game is that there's a lot of very, like, being good at the game is not really like being good at an RPG or something like that, right? Like, like playing through an RPG. Like, if you want to finish NetHack, you need to really dig into the, sort of the more arcane systems of the game. Right, you really need to, you need some very specific things to be able to make it through and to make it anywhere, honestly. So... You really need to get into sort of like getting intrinsics from eating corpses and, um, you know, how to properly sort of... Like, which kind of equipment you need and uh, all that kind of stuff. I, I do like that approach to roguelikes. Cave of Cut has some of that, but it's less rigid, which I do enjoy, right? Like Cave of Cut has a thing about sort of you, like in the main quest, you will be confronted with certain things that you need to find some way to overcome, right? Like it is pretty likely that you will at some point be confronted with an enemy that will do a lot of damage in a single hit. But what do you do, right? Yeah, like you might just 
go somewhere and you might come across a Rhinox and that Rhinox is going to charge you, how are you going to survive that? For example, right? Or like, um, you will need to go down into Golgotha, which means that you will have to go down a few stages um, of, you know, like a few... What a few floors of sort of kind of like sustained low danger and you need to get through that and then you drop down into a big old slime pit that might leave you with sort of a permanent sickness that you need to contend with right like something like that so there's like ways how to get around that right like how can i get through that or how can i minimize the possibility of me getting glot rot in golgotha stuff like that and there's always like multiple things like one of the things with Golgotha that you can do is you just wait till you go there that's usually how I do it it's kind of a cheesy thing but um, once you are high enough of a level like Golgotha is kind of trivial and then you need to kind of just make sure that you don't swim to through the sludge too much so to minimize the chance of getting sick and then you're kind of good right and it's actually not that hard um, You know, things like that. But uh, that's what I mean with that case of cut is not that rigid with it. Actually kind of, it's relatively forgiving in the in the grand scheme of roguelikes in terms of how much, how specific you need to be to overcome obstacles. Usually there's like multiple ways that you can. The one thing that's kind of tripping me up right now is that the, I mean, it's it's fine, but the uh, the HP meter does not change color when you get lower. <laughs> so I didn't actually think about that, but it appears that I actually kind of use that as a visual indicator. So I need to get used to that not being the case anymore. That's cool. I mean, there's a lot of indicators anyway, right? Like, um, the... Oops, Selene. Oh, Jesus, okay. Um, the the HP number changes color, and obviously my character changes color. As well. So, I mean, there's indicators enough. I have no excuse. But apparently, I did use the color of the... What? Oh, did it change? No, it didn't. It was always red, wasn't it? Like, I'm tripping. I think I'm tripping. It was always red. I'm... It's not... I, I'm kind of hallucinating. I'm sorry. Forget what I said. <laughs> it wasn't ever the case. Yeah, go swimming, please. Pick up a soaked wooly wooden tunic. Again, I'm just picking up everything. And we're actually getting kind of up there in terms of weight. That is good. Um, we're gonna go back. And I'm going to buy that sphere of negative weight. You know, having two spheres of negative weight, kind of nice. Why not? Oops, let's not. Shoot. Shoot indeed. Where are you? Punch you dead. Okay. Alright, so 150. Um... We have blood gen. I think I'm going to keep it at that for the time being. Let's see. Also, the chain, like this is down here now. Wasn't that here? I, I might be, tr I'm, I might be. Okay, well, I'm probably, hmm. I'm going to do cudgels and shields. I might do cudgels and shields. Let's get cooking and gathering for now. Now we're going to get butchery. Just to get some food going. I think I'm tripping. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. I mean, that's fine. That is fine. It's not like dissociating. Really. Oops, now I'm overburdened. Good. So let's drop something that is worth five. Uh, uh, but... Yeah, let's drop one of the furs. It's fine. Okay, let's go up. 
Oh, there's a snappy bossy. You know what? I'm famished. Yeah, brilliant. Deal with that later. First of all, we're going to go up. Also, I kind of like it that they tell you how many strata deep you are now. Uh, <clears throat> what did I want to do? Oh yeah, right, I want to eat something. Let's preserve, use ingredients. Let's do some bear jerky and some vine wafer sheaf. Sure. Yeah, that's a stupid thing. <laughs> not stupid thing, but not the greatest buff. Whatever. Okay, let's go upstairs. I'm going to go quickly going go back to Tam. I'm going to sell him all the junk that we have. Again, if you are not if you're tuning in sort of for the first time, this is something I usually do not do. I don't pick up tons of junk in this game because it usually is not useful. However, it is useful. I, I only do it if I need to buy something specific, you know, at the start of the game. Usually later on you can just skip that, honestly. But, uh, yeah. And since we have a small trinket here, that is a sphere of negative weight, I'm just going to get it, you know? Like having 10 more pounds of in inventory luggage. It's kind of nice. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm actually making a few hundreds here. Yeah, that's okay. Um, wooden bucklers, no. Okay, let's get that small trinket. Let's get the let slugs just in case. Let me just quickly see what you have. Uh, musket and short bow. Great. I might just take the, yeah, I might just take the water. So we have 180 drams of water. That is okay. That is fine. And I'm going to make a little stash of scrap here. Because we don't really, it will take a bit until we can actually disassemble it. And, you know, each piece of scrap weighs two pounds, so it's a little, uh, it's a little cumbersome to lug around the scrap all the time. Okay, it's kind of nice that uh, we have all the active effects here. Let me just check. Target. If I do this, shale. Okay, we get a permanent indicator of our target. That's actually very good. Injured hostile average. Uh-huh. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I mean, it was like the target thing was up here, but it kind of um, blinked out another th part of the UI. This is so much better. Like the new overlay UI is so much better. I like it. Also, um, because uh, I should have said that at the start, but I get this all the time. If you want to have the UI this way, what you need to do is go to the options, go to overlay UI, and do show overlay message bar and show overlay status bar. These are the things you want. The other ones, you don't really need that. Like the touch button bar, phone button bar, that's for playing the game on Android, right? Or like, whatever. Um, these are kind of the two that you that you want. And, uh, yeah. You can also enable overlay user interface elements, then you get the new inventory. I tend to not use that. I just do that. Like, that's kind of the one question I get the most on my videos. <laughs> like, on the stream archives is, Hey, how do I get the UI to that? What, which mods do I need to install? And the answer is, uh, no mods at all. It's in the game. Hey buddy, it's like but trolls. Yeah, sure, why not? I'm going to murder you for that. Do we have any... No. Oh, we do have slam, right. My face is dismembered. Holy fuck. 
Holy fuck! Okay. <laughs> Shit. The problem is our night vision thing is in the face. So we are kind of in trouble now. We have no face anymore. <laughs> oh, that is fun. That is so good. Okay, so uh, where were the stairs? Okay, we need to get back up right now. And we need to get our hands on a glow sphere. <laughs> oh. Christ. So I do wonder how the... Okay, this is my face. Is that We can actually butcher it. I've not had that happen ever, yeah. There's an achievement in the game for wearing your own face on your face. Um, which is fun. Wait, oh no, I need to go to equipment. I, I don't have the cybernetics tab anymore. Oh. Uh, yeah. I think I'm not going to do that, because I do kind of want to know whether I can get the cybernetics back. So you have a... F nah, we cannot get the floating glow sphere. Okay, we're going to get a normal glow sphere from you. Yeah. Offer. Does this actually decrease our ego? No, it doesn't. Like, losing the face doesn't. We have no face. Like, we can actually wear our own face on, on our face. I think this will just... Does this make face jerky? What happens if we butcher our own face? So we're gonna get... Like, this is not that problematic of a situation. We, um... We need to actually finish the Red Rock quest. And for that we're going to get an Uber Nostrum injector. And that will enable us to grow our face back. Right? Uh, so yeah. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> but still. I do wonder what happens with the cybernetics, actually. With the night vision cybernetics. Whether that's just gone now. Right? Like, the cybernetic would be in the dismembered face that we have. But... You know, there's no way to get that back. But we might just not have that anymore. Which is interesting. Yeah, get beta bracelets, that's good. We need, actually do need to worry about... Light sources now! Huh. Who needs faces in? Okay. Uh, should we? We already have colors. Swing for now. Oh well, let's collect daggers as we always do. Yeah, can actually collect everything from that. Who needs a face? Yes, indeed. Indeed. Totally agree. No face gang. Oh fuck. A slug snout here. Bad. Because we are hurt quite a bit. Even apart from the from the face thing. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Yeah. Not get unlucky. Okay. Also, we have a turn counter now for resting until healed. It's kind of cool. Turn 13. Yes, indeed. Huh. What 
Boo. Okay. Something is shooting. Okay, it's just. Just a seed spitting vine, so. Don't really worry about that. Also, ooh, haha. And slug snout. Whoops. Let's duck behind the wall. Rest a little bit. Yo. Can you come here, please? Okay. I'm just bloody. I'm not hurt. I mean, just apart from the face thing. I wonder what that actually looks like. I think, you know, obviously we can still see, right? Like, we still have our eyes, for example. We can still eat, so we still have our mouth. Um, is it just skinned off? I do wonder. Kind of a gruesome thing to wonder, but, uh, you know? It's just a skin, yeah. So when you wear another face, it's just a, uh, it's just like, it's just a Irenicus from Baldur's Gate kind of thing, right? Okay. Colossal Club? Wow. <laughs> Slime is twice as effective. Huh. Cool. I mean, it's just a club. It's not great, but... Huh. I think Colossal is also a new, relatively new prefix. Get dead, please. Okay. get this over with the red rock thing we're going to grow our face back um, I'm a little bit concerned that the cybernetics tab is gone entirely you know uh, yeah I don't know maybe it just doesn't show up if you don't have any cybernetics but well, we're gonna see. I'm not sure how that works. We're hungry. Oh, yeah, we're hungry. Let's make some food. Let's keep cooking. Okay, let's just do that. Max HP. Sure, why not? Okay. Also, I should rest up. Dual encrusted iron mace. Yeah, we're gonna pick that up. Sure, why not? Resting until heal. I kind of like the little graphic effect that it does. Like the little symbol that is indicating the passing of time. It's cool. It's really cool. They really did some some work to this game. I mean, of course they, they do. They constantly do. It's kind of amazing that this game exists. Okay. A small cube. Meet at camp cell. Okay, sure. I'm in club. Okay, we can drop that. blood around okay we also need sort of the well like the flaming you know what the flaming club is a good thing to give to archive so. let's get that yeah there was a break for a while like um i mean there was a longer break when they before they brought the game before they started selling the game 
right? Well, they started selling the game on Steam, and uh, it was just Steam at first. Came to HIO later, but uh, there was kind of a long break there because obviously they they weren't really making any money from that. Um, I think sort of one of the lead devs of this game, Brian Buckley, was uh, talking recently about like what enabled him specifically to make Caves of Cud was just kind of that he that he managed to come into money independently of game development by I think they, they were like they were um, like, I think he co-founded sort of an unrelated IT business and sold that uh, and they sold that and he yeah and that was just going okay now I'm just gonna work on Caves of God you know on a game that is really like you, you're not making this game if um, what you want to make is money from that game so that's kind of how Caves of Cut came to be. Um, they guess, like, after a while they had the thing where, you know, they made, uh, what was that game called? Like, their other, their, their more casual roguelike. I don't mean, I don't mean casual as, an, as a pejorative thing, but that's kind of what it is. Uh, Sproggy Wood, right. They made that game. But I believe, like, they're probably having, they probably do have some income from this game. But uh, I think it's maybe not going to sustain multiple people's living. Yes, Sproggy would. Right? And uh, I always read that, uh, like, the Sproggy would thing, I always read as. Yeah, Caves of Cut is cool, but it's a free rogue ASCII roguelike that we put on the internet. We need to do something that is sort of a more sustainable business. And it makes sense, right? And uh, and when they like put Caves of Cud onto Steam, you know, started selling it, and uh, you know, there's also the Patreon, like all that kind of stuff. Um, that made Caves of Cud more of a sustainable business, I suppose, because, again, they're still working on it. But, uh, yeah. Caves of Cud is just this crazy thing, is this. And I'm glad that things turned out the way they did. And I hope that... You know, it's what you always hope. Like, um, that this... That making this game is... Not just artistically, but generally a net positive for the devs. You know? Because... It is for me. <laughs> this game has given me a lot. Not materially, but sort of... Um, you know? Experiences. And kind of a constant in my life. Which is good. For, like, a bunch of years recently. So, I don't know. It's kind of an important game to me. <laughs> I mean, that's always kind of the thing with games, right? Um, creative works in general. Cool. The community is great, right? And that is something I commend them immensely for fostering. Because you get the community that you kind of, uh, you know, that you foster. It just doesn't, it doesn't happen from nothing, right? And they really... They really did well with that. You know, like one of the things that um, I always 
and that you can sort of like a game that is sort of sim yeah, it's a different game right but uh that you can maybe draw a comparison to is you know cataclysm dark days ahead um which is you know this hyper complex free survival roguelike thing and with that game there's kind of like when you like the thing that i found when i started playing it was that there was, there was kind of a little bit of sort of an edge lordy elitism that sometimes kind of surrounds that game not entirely right there's a lot of awesome people in that community as well probably i'm not all that um i'm not all that all that tuned in with the cataclysm cataclysm and also dwarf fortress for that matter but um you know like the first thing when i the first thing i looked up was like hey cataclysm beginner's guide right and the beginner's guides that i found the first one that i found started with like this is for you if you're an absolute moron and i'm like a fuck off man right like with throwing some i don't know ableist slurs and you got yourself a fun beginner's guide for a game cool good job get out of your mom's basement right like there's nothing wrong with being in your mom's basement for, for that matter you know that's just a stupid cliche but you get what i'm saying you know and again there's a lot of awesome folks right but uh with cancer you kind of don't get that because they were like they were really sort of about not fostering that kind of vibe. Also by being, you know, outspoken politically and making very clear where they stand and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I do... I do commend them from that a lot. You know, that, gets, that can get kind of underrated, but um, it's very important. And they've, they've created an inclusive and... The, the case of card community is a is at its core an inclusive and welcoming one and that is not god i uh, that you cannot take that for granted especially for this type of game that's just what i'm saying i'm just rambling i'm sorry the krug smash videos for dwarf fortress are amazing i haven't watched those i will keep that in mind um, yeah, I'm not that tuned into Dwarf Fortress all that much. It's always a game that has sort of, has sort of existed in my periphery, but um, that I never really set the time aside. <laughs> there we are again. Uh, maybe I should play that for 90 hours rather than Animal Crossing. No, it is anything that's worthwhile. Do with your time what you want. Um, okay. Uh, Star Apple Jam, sure. And board jerky. Ooh, a lot of board jerky. Yay! That's a good one. Dwarf Fortress is a game that I love to read about. Yeah. I love it. It's one of the games where I actually kind of prefer written let's plays to uh, to video let's plays. In a gameplay video, exploring the narrative of the game is similar. Yeah, that's great. Like that's sort of also kind of the the cool thing about Dwarf Fortress is the game as story generator right and also as history generator like this game has some of that but both photos actually you know it takes that so much further and that's awesome right uh cook smash yeah, that sounds interesting but yeah i love reading about both Alright. 
Right. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost at. Uh... Did I pick up the other seven? Wait, yeah, I did. Um, we're almost at Red Rock. So let's just quickly clear out these maps. I don't really need to be as thorough as I am with these maps. No. And just kind of get through them and get it over with. But, you know. Okay, killed Sean. Yeah, we actually get some soul time gossip here. Exodurt. Okay. Alright. Okay. Well, now let's go north. Now let's take a big old swim through the water. And there's the Gershling. Hello. Did I not get the quest? I did not get the quest. A Dumbo. I did not get any quest, didn't I? Ah, <laughs> uh, folks. I'm rusty. I'm rusty and old. Ugh. Mm. You know, it's kind of the thing, right? I, uh... Over... I've always kind of been interested in, um, like, over the over the corona lockdown. Too much rather than too little. Yeah, that's also... That, there might be some truth to that. Yeah. Like, for myself, I mean, obviously, not telling the truth about yourself, but... Uh, um, what was I going to say? I, I don't know, like, over the, sort of over the corona lockdown, one of the stupid, frivolous things that I kind of got into was... I kind of got into racing. Like, following, following racing. Formula One and this kind of stuff. I don't know. Like, it's kind of cool. Kind of interesting, sort of the... And I, you know, it's also, you know, like, all racing was obviously kind of cancelled during the lockdown, so that was a weird time to get into that. But, um... And I've always been kind of interested in that stuff. But, uh, yeah. And what, what was I going to say? I don't know what my train of thought was. Yeah, I, I just kind of got, got into that a little and just, you know, watched a bunch of old races and, you know, it's kind of cool. There's a lot of drama and, so, and stuff going on. But, um... You know, like, there's Formula One drivers that are born in, like, 2001. And that just... Well, like 2000 and I just you know and that just makes me turn to dust instantly I don't know that's just uh. that's just a thing this is kind of crazy you know like you're basically still a kid and you're, you're Doing these crazy races. All right, and that's cool. To be clear, it's a cool thing. It's just one of these things. Oh, I feel so old. And sometimes, you know, like the the sort of feel old yet memes. I don't know. Of course. There's people who, who are born after you. Like, get over it, right? <laughs> but that was just like one of these things where I was like, oh, ha, huh. yeah, hmm. True. Yeah, indeed. Also, that was one of the things that was really awesome at the... Um, I mean, it was also, like, obviously that was expected. But um, at the protest... 
recently that I was at. There were lots and lots of young people. Oh, young people, sorry. Young people. Like high school kids and stuff. Um, you know? There were also like the folks that you always see at protests, you know? Like your. <laughs> or that I always see at protests. Like. Love you. Or local lefties and so on but there was like a real huge turnout with uh, like really young people there and I liked that a lot god I sound so old I need to stop talking like that I'm not that old Okay, all right, let's, uh, let's do this. Okay, I'm in search of work, give me your quest. Okay, what's eating the water line? I think what we need to do is we need to go down here really quickly. Yeah, travel to Red Rock. Okay, let's do that. And let's give you the Gershling. All right, good. Okay, so fix its spray foam. All right, and we do have the Uber Nostrum now, don't we? Yes, indeed, we do. Great, we're going to apply that Uber Nostrum injector. And we're gonna try to grow back the face. Get the way you regenerate your face. Now the question is, yeah, we don't have it, right? Nope. And now wear my own face. That gets you an achievement. I already have that achievement. Current government. Yeah, it's obviously complicated. So, you know, it is a conservative government, right? Like, the, the party of Angela Merkel is the conservative party. And obviously, like, we are hugely critical of Angela Merkel as, you know, like, there's, like, all the issues that you see elsewhere are, like, one of the things, one of the weird things about Angela Merkel is that, or, like, the, the CDU government is that they will kind of embrace sort of what is seen kind of as progressive ideas if if they feel like it can be kind of opportunist in that way but you know fuck the government fuck Angela Merkel fuck the CDU it's garbage that is what I think about it Of course, leftists are not going to be down with sort of a neoliberal conservative government, right? And sort of the last few... <laughs> I mean, and the last few decades um, have, have, like, also, like, um, precariously enough, like, a lot of that was also on sort of... Like, we had a few years of uh, the Social Democrats being in power right like we have the that was sort of the red green one so there was a call the government was formed by a coalition of the social democrats and the green party in germany and during that time they did a lot of um dismantling they did a lot of dismantling of sort of uh, the you know of social programs and welfare and all that kind of stuff and it's not like the Conservative Party has been doing much to build that back up again. So, uh, yeah. Oh, fuck them. Fuck the Conservative Party. Fuck the Social Democrats. They are not your friends. I don't know. I need to be better prepared to talk in depth about that stuff. 
but just just for general vibes. <laughs> It's also kind of one of the things you need to keep in mind, especially when you compare that to other... Like, sometimes you find, for example, Germany compared to um, to the US, right? Where in the US, like, all of that stuff is just, like, about healthcare is just infinitely worse even, right? But the thing you have to keep in mind is that sort of the conservative parties in for example, Germany, are kind of working towards dismantling all of that stuff that is often kind of seen as sort of the, oh, it's so much better here. Yeah, we have um, we have universal health care, right? But even like the mandatory health care right now is, uh, is not what it was in, uh, yeah, or what it could be. Hello, I see Jack. So, um, yeah. A lot of that. You know, there's a lot of folks in politics who are really busy making things a lot worse for poor people. And that's a thing. <laughs> Hello, I see Jack. How are you doing? Let's drop it. Okay, so. Hmm. Okay, since we do not have our night vision phase anymore. Um might be a good idea to get that floating glow sphere at some point, but I don't think we can afford it. Just quickly see how much we can str scrounge together. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. We're gonna get one later. It's fine. Okay. Also, not doing all the basic stuff. Jeez Louise. I have so much stuff to actually. to do here. So, um, let's get some basic shield going, let's get some basic tinkering going, let's get disassemble. Alright, maybe tinker one. And let's do that, why not? Blender and gesticulating. Let's get gesticulating. Ah, gesticulating is fun, but maybe not what we actually, oh, whatever. Maybe Slender would have... It doesn't actually. Like from those... Maybe I should have gotten the, the grenade mod, honestly. Uh, not mod. The grenade data disk. Whatever. Okay, freezing and padded. Padded gives you... Check it off's chance to... S ah. Cool. Pretty cool. Freezing, padded, fire support, grenades. What is that? More stone, puzzling artifact. That's probably a. Uh, yeah. Chopper recoiler, yeah. Okay, cool. You're also selling that. Let's just do the knickknack thing. I also get rid of all the things that I wanted to give him. Ugh, such an idiot. Okay. How about... Ah, uh, you can have one of my chem cells. I could buy it back, but... yeah. Hello, safe sloth. Is that a sloth emoji? It's pretty... It's pretty... Like, I, I have chat on a second monitor, and it's pretty small, so... It's always tough to see what the emojis are saying. <laughs> I 
Okay, all right. So. Uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, right. We're gonna go. Yeah, we're gonna do the... Wow, jeez. Crypt, crypt, crypt. That zombie... Some rainbow stuff going. In terms of spitting. <laughs> Is that like... That kind of reminds me of the... Um, what was that? Metal slug? Where you could become a zombie and... Spit like gunk all over the screen. But it's much cooler with the with the colors, I must say. It kind of looked like that, though. Mm-hmm. Beer and comfy. Yeah, I uh, I approve of that. Not gonna have a beer though because a bit early in the day for that. Okay. All right. So we're just gonna cook a little bit, get some more jerky, and maybe some star apple jam again. Whenever you take damage, there's a nine percent chance you stop bleeding. Well. It's kind of funny that it really just a super improbable thing to happen if you think about sort of the actual mechanics of that, right? Outside of sort of a this is a buff outside of that game metaphor. Um, you know, like think about it. Like we ate a meat stew, and that meat stew made it that whenever someone hits us, there's a chance that that hitting us will stop a wound that we have from bleeding. Hey, I mean, that's a... That's a thing. That's a probable thing to happen. <laughs> this always makes me feel so out of the loop. Again, I... Don't follow that much gaming content. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid I don't know. I don't know the folks that you're referencing. But they seem to be cool people. So. I approve of that. For some reason the, the message window was not properly scrolled. I'm sorry about that. Wait. Unable to see the most recent messages. A lot of dwarf fortress and roguelikes. Sounds like a cool guy to me. Oh, we do have a becoming look here. That's interesting. Okay, cool. So let's check. Or everything. Okay, that's electromagnetic sensor. That's good. So I do wonder. Oh, pneumatic pistons. What do they do? Jump range has increased by four spaces. Wow, that's kind of awesome. Um, aristocrat. Yes, indeed. So let me just quickly. Yeah. Okay. So we just lost the night vision. So if you've just tuned in, the thing that happened earlier is that a snapjaw boss sliced our face off. And in that face, we had the night vision cybernetic. Um, that's just gone now. <laughs> okay, I mean, we can install some cybernetics. We have the pneumatic pistons, but we cannot actually jump anyways. So... How about... just install the electromagnetic sensor for now. 
you know, put that into our right arm. That sounds good. Okay. All right. So we should just find some more cybernetics. But it's kind of cool to just have becoming looks, have two becoming looks for that matter, just on the surface here. Okay. And yeah, we are obviously wearing our own face on our face, as you do. I did want to butcher the face. I don't know what actually what you actually get if you butcher a face. Or your own face. A human face. That might be... Do you get human jerky? I don't know. Especially because we have already determined that the face that is actually sliced off is mostly skin. Because you obviously still have your eyes and... Uh, maybe, yeah, probably the nose, right? Um, and your mouth. Even without a face, you can still see, you can still eat. Legendary giant dragonfly. That's interesting. Be careful because there might be dawn gliders. Bloody rubble. Oh, the rubble actually has a proper, proper thing now. Cool. Proper tile. Let's just auto explore that for a bit. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of dread roots around here, which is kind of neat. So, none of them are dropping any, any tubers though from destroying them. At least one. Okay. Harvest that one. We don't have harvestry yet, so whatever. I don't think we're going to return here, to be quite honest. Okay. Oh, there's clockwork beetles around here. Right. That's why we're seeing them through the wall, because of our electromagnetics. And even sense if they are wet or not. But interesting. Okay, um, let's go down. Should we go down? I mean, let's just explore that. Usually these layers are not that interesting. Depends on really what kind of layer they are, but... Uh, legendary dragon... Oh, buddy. The electromagnetic sense is actually kind of alright. Like being able to see robots through walls is useful. Um, what do we have? Poison gas grenade. Sure, let's take that. Sturdy leather moccasins, we don't really need that. Okay. There was something going on here. I don't know what. It's fine. Since the dragonflies are not hostile, might be fine most of what this is probably going to throw at us. We're gonna see. That's a shaft. Let's be careful about that shaft. First thistle. Sure. Yeah, at least that's a little bit of a good bit of a... Oh, that's a Let me talk to you. You have two plump mushrooms. We murder that guy. That was a very unfriendly thing to do. Whatever. I sip. Cool. I'm happy that you enjoy it. The records? Oh! You mean blind, not my content. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Ooh, awkward. No, uh, yeah. I should probably look into it. Okay, preserve your fresh foods. So we're gonna do ball jerky, style jam. That's kind of the go to for now. Yeah, 8% chance you get plus 40% max HP. Well, that's just a little bit ridiculous, but it's okay. Ah, oh, thank you very much. 
<laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Okay. That's, no, there's nothing in that chest. Okay. Goggles. We can disassemble them. Rest is not that interesting. Can I stairs down? No. Yes, there are. Okay. Well, the shaft wouldn't have been that bad. Okay. There's more dragonflies. All the dragonflies. Hey, yeah, you ring mail. It's not better than the studded leather. Is it? I think it is. Wait, let me take a look. Yeah, it's not as heavy. And that's the one thing about it. And that's that legendary dragonfly. Let me take a look at you. It's like by arachnids. Okay, not really in need. So... Yeah, we can actually do the water ritual. Yeah, do that. Insects increased. Raising hedonists increased. Arachnids has gone down, but that's okay. Um. Location of a water weep. Okay. Well, that's fine. All right. Doesn't seem to be anywhere else to explore. Indeed, there is a statue down here. I do want to take a quick look at that. Let me see. Ah, that's a Reshef. But we apparently already knew. Okay. Folks, we are done here. Let's go upwards. What's the surface? And finally make our way towards. You know what? Let's just quickly fast travel to the Rust Wells just to get that over with. There is the thing, the wire strand. Good. Go downstairs. Find the wire strand here. That's it. Good. Let's find stairs down. While not running into a kudzu. If we can manage it, we don't have a ranged weapon yet. That's done, but we still need to find the wire strand. Poison gas, okay. Yeah. Let's assemble the scrap. Okay. Hmm. There we go. Strand, good. One more. Now we're finally done here. Oh, hello. Slumbling over there. I'm not gonna mess with that guy. However, already done here. Got kind of lucky on the last floor. Now, now that we're done here, let's go back to Joppa real fast. And we're gonna get the Joppa recoiler. And uh, then we're maybe going to explore the underground a little bit. How about that? would be fun. Yeah, always have a recoiler before you explore the underground. That's my thing. Sure, investigate. Black Iku Shahedron Nabal. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. Let's explore that a little. 
I do have an electromagnetic sensor, so if there are any chain gun turrets or whatever behind the walls. Please get a little bit of a warning beforehand. to destroy that thing. Come on. Yeah. Ah. Ooh. Ooh -hoo -hoo. I stepped on the mine. It did not do, really do any damage, so whatever. Okay, I don't think these ruins are particularly interesting. Let's continue back to Joppa. Okay. So, buddy, friend, Argive. Flexi flexi weaved. Wait, what, what what was that? DV penalty is reduced. That's kind of nice. Jacked by a robot or cyborg with on my power system access to grid power. This item can draw power. That's kinda cool. Sphinx salt injector. No, oh, we're not gonna have Tinker 2 in a while. Shader is also... No, that's Tinker 1. Okay, we're gonna get that. Flexi Weave is also kind of nice. That's just for body armor, and I think I would want... You know what? Let's get Flexi Weave. Um, okay. First of all, let's do this first. Okay, buddy. Our... I do accept your task. Okay, now. Uh, flexi weaved. Okay, let's do that. Let's get rid of a bunch of the crap that we have. I don't think I'm ever going to use the magnetic pistons. So that's okay. Let's do that. Yeah, that works. Complete. All right. All right. Okay. So let's learn that flexi weave, just so we can flexi weave our stuff. We just go to tinkering. Well, we could flexi weave the ring mail. Two flawless crystals for that, which we don't have. However, we do have a bunch of scrap here. Not with the stuff that we would want, but... Okay. Disassemble all. Okay. Alright. So, what shall we do? Oh yeah, right. We have the Joppa Recoiler, which means we also have a few chem cells, so we can actually use this with the Joppa Recoiler, which is good. So... Before we go to the historic site, what if we just went downstairs a little bit and explored the underground for a bit? Right? Right. I think that sounds good. What we're going to do is we're going to go down as much as we can until we get to the underground waterway, and then we're just going to go into the darkness. Preferably without being famished. So, board jerky, stable jam, book with 10% chance to stop bleeding. Yeah, no. Not. Not the buff that I would want, but that's how it goes sometimes. Okay, can we actually get somewhere from here? Not really. Okay, that's fine. Let's go over here. Ah, yes. Okay. I do like exploring just the normal underground. It's fun. You know? Ah, can go downstairs. We're gonna do that. We're not going to go too deep down. You know, level 6? Why not? Level 6 is good. Let's be here. And it's gonna be... You know, you often kind of, you can find some cool stuff down here. Um, and I do, oh dear, that was acid gas. Um, I do like to do that early in the game. Why are you fighting each other? 
interesting. Don't they trash monks and a painted car by battle? So let's get that, let's get that borderlands revolver, let's equip that. Um Do we have anything on our back? No we don't. We can actually use the leather cloak. Okay. And you know what? The copper now. The trash monks and other folks don't get along, huh? Trash monks and uh, what are they called? Ah You know the scavenger thieves. Just one more, just one more, one more, and I died instantly. Yeah, I've done that many a time. Two-handed steel warhammer. Although on further inspection, I don't need that because we we do need to have. Yeah, no. I do need to carry my because of our unfortunate incident earlier. I do need to carry a glow sphere in my hand. Arconaut, right. That's who they are. Okay. Congealed honk honey. Okay. Let's collect that stuff. Steel dagger. Another borderlands revolver. Good. Let's have two revolvers. Let's akimbo that shit. Um Yes. Good. But we do have a fidget cell, is what I'm noticing right now. <laughs> hey June. Tried this game again and still can't get into it. Yeah, that's okay. You know? There's no imperative to get into a specific game. That's cool. And I absolutely get it. All right. I don't know why I am my I am chasing that spider, but okay. You know what? Let's go one further down. Oh dear. Okay, so we have in the way for oh shit, yeah. We will probably not Yeah, <laughs> that thing would have absolutely killed us. Okay. You know, that's kind of the thing about the underground. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do we have butchering on yes? Yeah, that's the thing about the underground. There is a possibility that you oh the waveform worm is apparently has apparently followed us. So let's just keep going and not <laughs> and hope that it doesn't follow us any further. Prob probably doesn't. Quite honest. I think they I think the the worm was not after us. No. Just after the initial thing. Okay. okay some bronze ingots here. Yeah. They're yeah, kind of neat. Oh, I do have a miner's helmet. I mean, the glow sphere is still better. Yeah, it's just steel. You know what? I'm not gonna go two-handed just yet. Once we get a floating glow sphere, we'll, uh, we'll do that. All right. So where are we? I think I'm not gonna go further than ten. No, the next stratum change is gonna be or the next. Oh, carbide hammer! Two-handed carbide hammer. Uh, with that one, I will actually think about it. My shooting vest. Oh yeah, that's good. Definitely better than the ring mail. 
let's get rid of the ring mail. Let's take a quick look at that. Compass bracelet. Yeah, we're going to equip one of those. Magnetized boots. I'm just going to disassemble them. Get us some pure alloys. All right. Okay. But yeah, that's kind of the thing about the underground. You often will find these sort of, like, loot corpses, yeah. Uh, where you will find some cool stuff, generally. And especially this early in the game, you can get kind of a nice head start on equipment. Okay, I think it's time for a self-injector. Wow, that could and sh probably should have killed me. I was not efficiently careful here. He's Louise. Okay, so all we're gonna do is we're going to go with the two-handed carbide hammer. So now we can't see as far as with the glow sphere but you know that's a solar cell let's get that deal maze not that interested in that but okay I really do need to be careful about the damage that I take. When we have 7 AV. I mean, our vest's cracked, so 8 AV. That's not a lot. That's really not a lot. So we definitely need to be careful about that stuff. Um, Boar jerky. Especially down here. Yeah. I think that that waveform worm would have probably just disintegrated us instantly. Uh, good thing we got away. <laughs> okay, weird artifact. What is this? Spring loaded steel boots. Sure, I'm going to wear those. Slime stained leather boots. No. That obviously brings our dodge value down even more. Okay. Oh, I was. That's where the worm was. So, how about. Don't go there. We can go further down here. Need to think about whether I will actually do that or not. Let me just quickly check out this. Oh, that's a nano pneumatic jackhammer. Um, I'm going to disassemble the cell that is in. I think we're going to leave that here. I mean, it is a cut shield, isn't it? A colossal jackhammer. Nah. Okay, good. Hmm. Yeah, okay, well, let's go one further down. Eight strata deep, okay. It's r roughly like every five strata that you run into something that, uh, that, you know, that things sort of level up, or like the things that you find down here level up, generally, but, you know, not completely deterministic, so you can always run into something that is way beyond where you are at, even if you are not that deep down, you know? Like one time, I actually ran into a Rhinox in the salt marshes around Joppa. That is something that can happen. Or like pretty close to Joppa. Oops. 
thingy. Level 11. Okay. Um, you know, I think it's time to get conk. I know we're just going to continue exploring this. Last few maps haven't been super interesting. But, you know. Stop cracking my awesome Chitin vest. I'm styling, folks. I'm styling. Just a worm that goes like. Nice vest you have. Don't you hate when that happens? We can go up here again. Not gonna do that for now. We're really not good at shooting things. Also, let me quickly get Harvest Tree so we have that out of the way. There we go. I need to actually... Next time we're in Joppa, I'm going to I need to remember to drop off the dreadroot tubers. Probably gonna be a while until we can do anything with them. If ever, you know. Or it depends on whether you get the get the data disc or not. Oh, there's a shooty thing. I think it's a musket turret, so that's okay. Yeah, oh no, it's a rifle turret. But that at least gives us a whole bunch of that slugs. So we don't need to be stingy with ammo anymore, which is very nice. Painted Borderlands with it. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Bespoke. A bespoke piece of weaponry. Probably says Jeb on it or something like that. Okay. Let's dis disassemble that thing. You know what? Kill dagger. Take that. Thing that I want to do. Let's go into tinkering. Oh, we can mod them to be gesticulate. Need two your allies for that. Bonus strength floating nearby. Nice. Okay, we cannot do flexi weaved because we don't have a DV. What's the word? Sorry. Yeah, we don't have a DV penalty on our armor. So can't reduce that any further than anyone's. So, yeah. I could maybe put Jestic... And, like, we don't have anything floating nearby right now. So I could... You know what? Steel Gauntlets are not that rare, so... The next one we find we're gonna keep. Just so if we do need the floating nearby thing. So they are gesticulating now. Take a look. Plus two strength. Yeah, that's actually pretty nice for now. Okay. Alright, let's make some food. Ingredients. Bear jerk. Okay. Oops. Oh. It is kind of time. 
So I need to actually go and make some food now. But I might be back later today. Because I'm kind of in a nice flow in terms of streaming. So, um, yeah, I will go make some food, make some lunch, and I'm gonna be back later today. So, thanks folks for watching. Um, I think I'm going to bring the stream down because I'm going to be gone for a while. So, um, I don't want to have this on a hey, quick break when I'm probably going to be gone for an hour and more. So, uh, yeah. So, have a nice rest of your day and we might see each other again pretty soon. Bye bye.